you got yourself a laser. Good deal. Don't really know a whole lot about it. I'm going to be doing a series of videos here on just starting out and doing a, a project on a laser. I'm going to take you through everything very slowly, step by step, so you will better understand how some of these things work. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and I'm going to be showing a very basic project on a laser. And for this particular one, I'm using the Ortur Laser Master 3, and we're going to take this piece of cedar right here. And why am I using cedar? Go to your local home store, whether it be Lowe's or Home Despot, Depot, Menards, RP Lumber, whatever you've got around, get some cedar fence pickets. They're six foot tall, they're nominal five and a half wide and they're rough sawn and they're a nominal half inch thick which is usually more like five eighths I run them through the planer because I have one you can also sand them or if you want that rough effect you can do that too but it kind of sometimes makes engravings look a little funny so what I've done here is I've sanded this down the 220 on the side I'm going to be engraving on I've done a little quarter inch round over around all the sides, make things nice and smooth, sanded the edges, so it's going to make a nice little tray for what's called a Santa Doodle. So I'm going to take you on the computer here next, show you where to get this file, it's completely free, and then we're going to bring it in the light burn, get it set up, then we're going to put it on the laser, we're going to do the engrave. So I'm going to show you where to get a some graphics and some projects for free and since you're starting out and if you go to designbundles.net and I'm not sponsored by them I do belong to this site and I have a plus membership there but you do not need to be a member but you can go over here where it says free designs you go down here to where it says free laser files and that's what we have right here and I've got a couple projects I'm going to grab here for just doing a little bit of uh, beginner work with. So here's one for cuts. So I'll confirm that one, download that. And we'll scroll down here. I know there's another little one. Another Dear Santa Doodle Cookies. That would be a nice engrave. Confirm that one. As you can see, there are a lot of different things you could uh, download here. And there's another page yet. I'll even go to it. These are just the free things. You have a little idea of some of the projects you can make when you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money, you don't want to buy graphics because you're not sure if you're going to be able to use them or not. So there's a good way to get them free. So these files come in a zip format, so you're going to need to uh, unzip those. Just do extract all here. We'll take it right into this downloads folder for now. That's showing that. Now we can take those and bring them in the light burn. Okay, for this project, we're going to do the little Santa's cookies. This is engraved. I'm going to be using the Ortur Laser Master 3 on this one. This is a 10 watt laser. Here we are in light burn, and yes, it's good. So I need to bring my project in, and we're going to do the free Dear Santa's cookies, and we want the SVG file right here. So there's my graphic, and the size of this graphic is 8.5, well roughly 8.6 by 5.5. So I'm going to put this on a little piece of cedar, so I need to reduce that just a little bit. This my uh, cedar is 5.125, so I'm going to make this just 5. That'll resize this. Make sure you keep your little padlock locked up here. So I went to layer 2 because I know that that's my fill. When we go over here to cuts and layers. Doing, I'm going to do offset fill. 4500 millimeters per minute at 70% power. There's what our graphic will look like. On this particular project I'm using absolute coordinates because I'm going to be working from center in the center of the workspace. So one of the things I want to do to make sure this is in the middle, we'll highlight all this, go up here to this little guy, click on that, and move to page center. 
One of the questions I know I'm going to get asked is, uh, where did you come up with your settings? Uh, this is on a 10 watt laser. I run tests on a lot of these. We make a lot of wood signs. And I happen to know the 4500 millimeters per minute at 70% power with offset fill does an excellent job at engraving on the cedar. Why do I use offset fill instead of regular fill? Well, there's a couple reasons. Uh, one is time. So look at the time here. This is going to take 10 minutes and 57 seconds. If I switch this over here to fill, and this is a preview here of your project. That's what this little screen is up here. It'll now take 25 minutes and 29 seconds. And my, the other thing I tend to run into when using regular fill on cedar is I get a lot of uh, scorching, even though I'm going to have my air assist on. Uh, offset fill, it runs back and forth all over the place and tends to not scorch quite as bad. So this is what we're going to be looking like. Okay, so what if you've got a laser that does not have limit switches and auto homing and all that kind of good stuff and it's very, very difficult to work from absolute coordinates on that. In that case, I suggest you work your project from center and use what's called current position right there. And you'll see a little green dot appeared. Another thing you can do to help you out if you measure your workpiece, mine happens to be five and a quarter by ten. You can go over here and grab a box and make it any size you like. And unlock this little lock here. My workpiece is ten inches wide, so we'll make that to ten. And the height of it is 5.25. So now we have this box there. Go back up to your little arrow. It'll highlight. Go down here where it says T1. That becomes a tool path. That does not engrave. It doesn't do anything. It just shows you where your work area is. So you can bring this down and make sure that you are centered. And everything will fit on your work. And from there, you can go to the next processes I'm going to be showing here in a minute. Here's one change you're probably going to want to make on here. And that is, and I'll blow this up so you can see that right there. And it says, love your names. Well, you're going to need to change that unless your name happens to be your names. So the way to do that here in Lightburn, highlight this whole thing. Go up here to this little person. That's ungroup. So we can ungroup that selection. Come back down here. We'll blow this up so we can get into where it says your name. We need to take that section out. Now we have to put a name in there. So we'll go over here and get your text. And I think I'll use my great granddaughter's name. Okay, that's obviously not the uh, <clears throat> font I want to use, but I'm up here to this arrow. Select that one, move that over so I can play with it. We also want to move that over to the same layer and cut. So now I need to change my font. And you can do whatever font you want here. Move that up here. I want it to look a little bit different than everything else. Kind of looks like a three year old rotor, doesn't it? That was my intent anyway. Then we get a little preview of this here. So that's how it's going to look. So I've got myself focused. I've got my workpiece in place and where I think it needs to be. But what we always want to do is frame your work. So this little button right here will frame your project. Well, as you can see, it's following right along the edges. I may need to move it to the right just a little bit. I do. That's why you want to frame your work. Let me frame again to make sure I'm on it everywhere. Okay, that's framing the toolpath. Now if I take the toolpath out of that because I don't need that full width, so I'm going to delete that here. here. I'm still working from absolute coordinates. Now I'll frame this again and you'll see it, it'll change things. And we are all good to go. So from here, I can go over 
and hit start. I decided to run this without my air assist and if I would have my air assist on that scorching you see on the top there you would not be near as prevalent or if it was even be there. I'm doing it this way so that I can show you what to do afterwards because I would imagine if you're just starting out in this you're probably not going to have air assist on your laser. If you do it's a good thing to have because it will reduce the scorching there on an engrave and it's a, a huge benefit when you're doing cutting too. We'll let this engrave here and I'll show you what to do about that little scorching you see around the letters. So there's our project. As you see there's some little scorching around the letters. Um, I'm using, this is actually a used disc of 220. I'll just take this and going with the grain, I will sand this. Okay, so as you can see after sanding it, I got rid of all that scorching. I just took, a, of course I used compressed air to blow that off, but you could also use a tack cloth to clean it. So now you need to put a finish on it. Okay, so what can you finish this with? There's a lot of things you can use. I will give you a, a word of caution if you're going to do something where you're going to be brushing you could possibly pick up some of the soot that's down inside this engraving and would smear on your project. Therefore, on laser engraved things, I always recommend at least your first coat is something that is in a spray format, aerosol, whether it be polyacrylic or uh, polyurethane. I'm going to be using lacquer because it dries very, very fast, and I need to be able to show you what else we're going to do with this. We're going to put some feet on it. And then I'm also going to show you another option you could do if you think this is just too small. So let me take this over to my paint booth, which consists of a cardboard box on the other side of the shop. You don't need to watch me spray this. So I'll go get a coat on this. I'll come back and then I'll show you another option if you want to do something a little bit bigger. So let's say you want it bigger. Maybe something like this. It's just a piece of plywood I grabbed out of my scrap box over there. But you can make this about any size you want. And I'm going to take you on the computer here. I'm going to show you how to resize this. Okay, so now we're going to resize this. One of the things I probably should have done earlier was regroup this. Since I changed the name in it there from your names to my great granddaughter's name. So if you go up here where you see this group of people, click that. That groups it. That makes it all one size. So if you're working and you know your, there's a couple ways to do this. So there's a couple ways to do this. If you know what size workpiece you have, go up here and lock your little padlock. So let's say that our uh, board for this was going to be 12 by 12. Well, the maximum you would want to go on this would be on the width here would be, I would go 11.5. Now it automatically change the other dimension. So your ideal piece would be uh, 8 by 12. So if you had an 8 by 12 piece, this graphic would fit on there just fine and everything would be a little bit bigger. I'm making this one small because it was quick to engrave and it was quick to demonstrate. But you can make this any size up to what your laser will, bed will handle. Okay, here's our little cookie tray for Santa with uh, one coat of lacquer on it. I will sand this and put another coat on, but what I want to show you next is I'm going to put some little feet on the back of this so that it kind of sets up and looks like a tray. These are what they call cutting board feet, and I'll put a link in the description where to get them. I get them on Amazon. So I'm going to put one in each corner. I'm going to be using a number six by half flathead screw. Cedar is very soft. It's very easy to uh, work with, so you don't really need a pot at all for your screws. So there's our little tray with some feet on it. And I will be putting another, I'll be sanding this with 400 grit. I'll put another coat of lacquer on it. 
and let it dry and then it'll be ready for their great granddaughter to leave out there for Santa on Christmas Eve. There's a very basic beginner project. Uh, the graphic is free. Uh, a fence picket will cost you about four bucks. And you need to cut it up and do and do some sanding and that type of thing. Uh, but there again, you can use other types of wood too. You'll need to do a little bit of a test, uh, what I call a burn test on a scrap, because every piece of wood from batch to batch seems to burn a little different. So I always do a little some test burns and maybe just a little test and grade with the word test or just a letter or a small graphic so you can find out and zero your settings in before you do your actual project otherwise you may have your whole project laid out and it may be a long engraved and you'll end up with something you're not happy with. The settings I gave here on this project are actually for the Artur Laser Master 3 which is a 10 watt laser, 10 watt output. So you you could start with that if you have a 10 watt laser. If you have a 5 watt laser and you try to use those settings your engraving will be way too light and it's not going to work out. And I'll be doing some other videos here as we go on uh, in these beginner type projects where you could, you know, you're starting out, you're learning, you want to get going and let's say you have a 5 watt laser. There'll be some more projects for that in both engraving and cutting. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. There'll be links in the description for everything I used on here.